is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Lost Labia Chronicles where I discuss all things lichen sclerosis. So if you have lichen sclerosis and are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to this channel and keep on watching. And if you have a friend or family member with lichen sclerosis and you want to learn more about the disease in order to better support them in their journey, then please subscribe to this video, uh, this channel, and share it with them. All right, so in my last video, I kind of did a kind of vulvar biopsy for lichen sclerosis 101. So kind of, you know, looking at what does a biopsy entail? What kind of markers are they looking for with your biopsy sample in order to make the diagnosis, best times to get, you know, a vulvar biopsy, etc. Now in this video, I want to just share a ton of tricks with you. I'm going to share tips and tricks that you can do before, during, and after your vulvar biopsy in order to make this procedure as comfortable as it possibly can be. So you're definitely going to want to bookmark this video and please share it with anyone that you know that has a vulvar biopsy coming up, regardless of if it is for suspected LS or not. All right, let's jump into the video. All right, so when it comes to the topic of vulvar biopsies, it is very common for the focus to be on the procedure itself and tips and tricks that you can do after you've had the biopsy. And this is great, but there are actually a ton of things that you can do before the procedure to really help set you up for success and make this procedure as comfortable as something like this can be. So the first tip that I have for preparing, you know, before you even get the biopsy is to have a good conversation with your healthcare provider. Now, when you're having this conversation, I recommend asking the following three questions. So the first question is how many biopsies do they anticipate taking and why? So typically for vulvar lichen sclerosis, when it's suspected, most people tend to get one biopsy. However, there are folks that sometimes end up getting two or even three vulvar biopsies. So you definitely want to know in advance how many they anticipate taking. And here's why. If you go in to their office the day of your procedure expecting that they're going to take one biopsy and they tell you, uh, you know, you're just on the table, they're about to start and they tell you that they're going to be taking two or three. If you're anything like me, anxiety girl, that could cause you to go into an instant panic. For me, I'd be now just, just the change itself would trigger kind of anxiety, but then also now I'd be extra worried about the pain because they're doing it in more sites. And I'd also start thinking like, why, why do you need three more? Oh my gosh, they must see cancer or something really bad. Like, and so I would spiral in that respect. And so to kind of avoid that, it's important to kind of manage expectations and know how many they plan on taking. Now, if they tell you that they plan on taking two or three, ask them why. Now it's not to be combative, but it's really just to understand what's going to happen to your body and why. So, and this can also help calm some fears. You know, if the worry was, oh no, they must suspect vulvar cancer, that might not be the case. And so you can actually have that conversation with them and it can feel really empowering to be a part of your healthcare plan in this way where you know what's going to happen and you understand the motivations for why. The second question you can ask is if they plan on prescribing any medication for pain post-procedure. So this varies from doctor to doctor. Some just tell you to use OTC type medications like acetaminophen, which brand name Tylenol. Um, and then others will prescribe, you know, like three days, a kind of oral medication that you would pick up at the pharmacy. So you might want to ask in advance if they plan on prescribing anything. And if they do asking if you can get that prescription in advance so that you could fill it before the day. Lastly, Ask them if they plan on using like a topical numbing cream. 
So in my vulvar biopsy video, I had kind of walked through the procedure of how a biopsy unfolds. And so for many folks, this is kind of a two-step thing. So here's our little vulva puppet. Now let's pretend we've got a white patch here on the labia minora. So they're going to biopsy this area. That means they're going to take a little sample of that. So to do this, they're going to inject you with a pain medication to kind of numb that area. And then once that pain medication kind of sits in, you know, X amount of time, then they're going to take that little biopsy sample tool and remove a small part of that area. Now, most people that have had a vulvar biopsy will tell you that the injection part itself is way more painful than the biopsy part. So unfortunately, that's a two step. Not all doctors will give you a three step procedure, which is where you actually start by applying a numbing cream to that area and then they do the injection and then they do the biopsy. So it's actually not standard practice to kind of do the numbing cream. However, you can request it. So ask your doctor if they plan on using a numbing cream like Emla or something. It really depends on the country that you kind of live in, um, where the country that I live in, Emla is quite common. So ask them if they plan to use a numbing cream before the needle. And if they say no, request that they use a numbing cream or ask if you can pick one up at the pharmacy to apply prior to um, their injection. And this is just to kind of help manage the pain from that injection. Vulvar biopsy aftercare is another important thing to have a discussion with your healthcare provider about. Now, ideally, you don't wanna wait until after they've done the biopsy to ask your aftercare questions. Um, the procedure itself can be incredibly emotional and painful and just bring up a lot of stuff and you might forget the questions that you had to have that you wanted to ask the day of. So kind of stay on top of that and ask your aftercare questions beforehand. So again, before the procedure, you have a conversation with your doctor about aftercare. And here are th three key questions that I recommend asking. So the first is, ask them if they plan on providing you with an aftercare sheet. So normally, uh, not normally, often they'll have like a printout or like a little pamphlet and that'll kind of tell you all the things like the do's and the don'ts post biopsy. Secondly, ask them what kind of signs of complications to look out for. So as with any procedure, infection is a risk you can kind of stay on top of this by knowing what signs to look out for so that if those signs happen, you can take action and you know what to do. Now related to that, and the third question is, ask them if they can provide a contact for you in the event that you experience any complications. So you know how like anytime you get anything done, things seem to always go wrong on the weekend? It's just like the story of my life. I get a procedure done on Wednesday. Thursday, things are good. Friday, things are good. Saturday, it all goes to hell. And then I have to wait anxiously in pain until Monday. And then I'm trying to reach the doctor's office to see if they can get me in. So that can be really, you know, anxiety inducing. And you don't want to have to sit, you know, worried about an infection or you, you know, so what you can do to kind of help with that is know the signs. So if you have the signs of an infection or you suspect infection, now you have a contact number to reach and you can let them know, you know, hey, I have these signs of infection. What do I do? They might be able to send you an antibiotic prescription over the phone. They might bring you in, but at least you have a contact number for after hours if things go wrong or you suspect you know, any type of complication that needs to be addressed. So you want to get that kind of contact number, be it an on-call nurse or just someone that you have um, that you can call on if there's any complications. And this can really 
um, provides you with an extra kind of feeling of safety and security. So that can feel very good emotionally speaking, just to just to have that number as a just in case, right? You know, at least for me, again, those like plan B, plan C, plan Ds, you know, those really help me and my anxiety. So those can be good questions to ask your doctor about aftercare before you get to your biopsy. All right, so another thing that you want to do before you go into your procedure is to stock up on some essentials. So I'm going to walk through a bunch of things that you are probably going to want to pick up and have on hand the day that you get your biopsy. So the first thing that I recommend is ice packs, but not just any ice packs. I specifically recommend a brand called Private Packs. So they make these amazing um, reusable, discreet um, pads. Now these can be either warmed or put in the freezer to make an ice pack. They're ergonomically created to kind of fit the vulvar area. So it goes from the clitoris to the anus. So you can get that cooling effect for the whole vulvar area. It also comes with a sleeve, a cotton sleeve that you can put that ice pack in and then that can slip into your underwear and you can kind of wear that discreetly. Uh, you can wear these lying down, you can wear them walking, standing. They're really, really accessible and discreet, which is what I love about them. Um, so they are really good for symptoms of lichen sclerosis, such as itch and pain, uh, as well as inflammation. So these can definitely be helpful post biopsy to kind of bring down some of that inflammation and help numb some of that pain once your numbing agent kind of wears off. So if you want to get your private packs, regardless of it's for a biopsy or to help manage itch and pain and symptoms from lichen sclerosis, I will leave a link in the description box below where you can get yours and use code all caps, no spaces, the Lost Labia Chronicles for 15% off your first order. The second thing that I recommend getting is a peri bottle. So I'm going to pop one up on the screen um, because I can't find mine at the moment. Um, I went to film this video and I was like, where the shoot is mine? Um, so a peri bottle, which I've got up there, is essentially like a bottle and you can fill it with water and then it kind of squirts out. Now these can be really helpful to rinse and clean the area after you urinate. So the thing is, post biopsy, you know, toilet paper, I was gonna say paper towel, and I was like, nope, nope, not paper towel, you don't wipe with paper towel. Toilet paper may feel too abrasive and irritating. Even if you're a pat dryer and you don't actually wipe, it can be really irritating. So avoid, you know, you're already irritated and in pain, right? We don't wanna make that worse. We don't wanna add more irritation to that area. So a way to softly and safely kind of clean post urinating is to kind of just squirt a little of that peri bottle water. So you can get these all over the place. You can get them really cheap on Amazon and then there's a bunch of other shops. You can just kind of Google um, peri bottle and find one that works for your budget. Um, another thing to pick up would be uh, something like Vaseline or petroleum jelly um, or whatever kind of product your healthcare provider recommended on their aftercare sheet. So remember we had that conversation about, you know, know in advance what the aftercare procedure looks like. Some, but not all, doctors will recommend using petroleum jelly like Vaseline on the biopsy site. Um, so if they recommended that, get the product that they recommended. Um, again, if your doctor did prescribe a pain medication, then I recommend picking that up before you have the procedure. Because trust me, once that is procedure, once that procedure is done, you don't want to then have to drive to the pharmacy and wait for them to fill your prescription and then get the prescription kit. You're just going to want to go home. You're not going to want to run errands after a biopsy. So if your doctor gave you a prescription, definitely be sure to fill that before. And if they didn't, because a lot of doctors don't, and they might just tell you take ibuprofen or acetaminophen, which is, you know, Tylenol and um, Advil. Uh, if they told you to just take, you know, kind of over the counter type medication, then make sure that you have those again in advance because you're not going to want to go to the pharmacy after. Just kind of plop them next to your, I don't know, bed stand or your 
wherever you plan on kind of spending some time healing and recovering, couch bed, I don't know, put it kind of next to you so that you have it for when you need to take some for the pain. The next thing is to have a nice amount of loose and comfortable clothing ready. So I recommend kind of taking out, you know, two to three days worth of your comfiest, most coziest pajamas and outfits that you have. Really loose, really breathable. Same thing for the underwear. You know, we're not going to be wearing those lacy Victoria's Secrets as we heal. Um, so some nice loose cotton or, you know, breathable underwear. And, you know, just set that all out so that your clothes are taken care of. All you got to do is wake up and just change into something loo uh, loose and comfy. The next thing that I recommend getting is bleach free and fragrance free menstrual pads. So the reason that I recommend this is that it is common for there to be some bleeding post biopsy. So if you're going home in a car, a taxi, transit, you definitely don't want to bleed all over those seats. Um, and then when you're recovering, you know, either in bed or on your couch, again, you don't want to bleed all over your stuff. So maybe make sure that you have a couple of pads, at least the day of the biopsy and for the next day or two until that bleeding just kind of tapers off. And um, the last thing that I kind of recommend that you kind of have on hand or have ready or taken care of before you go in to get your biopsy is to have your kind of favorite comfort meals ready and have some meals that really don't require much. So like if you can have like a lasagna that all you need to do is throw it in the oven or throw it in the microwave, if you're like a casserole person, if whatever, whatever kind of, you know, I, I like mac and cheese, that would be my, my preference. Um, so, you know, whatever those comfort meals are, have those ready, have some nice good meals that make you feel happy, you know, ready because again, once you get home, especially once that, you know, injection medication starts to wear off, the last thing you're going to want to have to do is worry about making meals. So have some good meals kind of prepared already. You can do kind of overnight oats um, so that you have breakfast and maybe kind of make, you know, some nice big salads and bulk it up with protein and some healthy fats and all of that for your lunch and you know a nice casserole or something for dinner just kind of get your food taken care of so it really requires minimal amount of work because again you're not going to want to do that while you're healing so let's talk about tips for during the actual procedure itself tip number one you matter yes I'm going to say that again. You matter. At any point during the procedure, it is your right as a patient to say, hold up, I need a minute. So if you're feeling uncomfortable or anxious and you feel a panic coming on, you can tell them, hey, when it's safe, I need to just pause for a moment to regroup. Can you just give me a moment to settle my nerves? And then do what you need to do to kind of settle those nerves. Close your eyes, take some nice deep diaphragmatic breaths, do whatever you need. And then when you feel okay, you let them know, all right, I'm comfortable, we can proceed now. Now, of course, there are, you know, kind of some parts during the procedure where they might literally not be able to stop for your own safety. So if you communicate that, just, you know, ask them when it's safe to pause, can you please pause? so that I can just have a minute. I've done this for a bunch of procedures. Um, usually when I feel like a kind of panic attack coming on, I usually let them know, hey, when you can, your next opportunity to pause, please pause. I feel a panic coming on and I just need to regroup. And then here are some additional things that you can do the day of the procedure to kind of help with some nerves about the whole procedure because it's a very nerve wracking procedure. It's not just the procedure itself. It's all of the implications, of, you know, about the fact that you need this procedure, right? There's all the, the worry about the diagnosis and potential, you know, vulvar cancer. And there's just, there's a lot tied up into it. So it can be a very emotionally charged day for many people. And those emotions will look different for each and every individual. So acknowledge whatever emotions you are feeling and do what you need to do to kind of help manage those. So some recommendations to kind of help with the nerves are 
bring headphones. Let them know that you're very nervous and maybe what you can do is you can play you know, some spa music or your favorite kind of music, or maybe even pop on a podcast, you know, just pop on uh, Lichen Sclerosis podcast if you want um, and listen to her um, her episode on appointment anxiety, which is one of my go-tos for when I'm nervous at appointments or whatever other podcast you're interested in, just something to kind of distract the mind, right? And kind of calm things down. So you pick what's good for you, but yeah, bring headphones, let them know that you wanna wear these during the procedure because you're nervous. Um, normally they'll just make sure that it's like low enough that you can kind of communicate with them and vice versa. And other than that, it's normally okay. Another recommendation is, and this, you know, of course this depends on where you get your biopsy, what country you're in and the kind of state of the pandemic um, but see if you can bring a friend or family member with you um, this can help a lot of people just to have that extra support person with them to kind of walk them through everything and it just can be really nice when you're kind of leaving the recovery room to kind of see a familiar face that is ready and there to support you and in this vein also, ideally, if you can, see if you can get somebody to bring you to and from your procedure. I do know of folks that have had their biopsies and drove themselves there and back and said they were okay to drive. Um, but the truth is, you know, it's just about adding that extra layer of comfort. If you don't absolutely need to, then maybe try and get somebody to take you. It can just be nice, takes the pressure off you, you're already gonna be stressed. Ideally, we don't wanna be driving when we're super stressed or in pain. Um, so getting somebody to bring you there can be um, very nice and provide some sense of safety and comfort, which can be very welcoming in high stress times. Another thing is to, as much as possible, try to take nice, deep diaphragmatic breathing. So really in to the nose, down the throat, and then really breathing into that diaphragm and let that belly kind of expand out and then nice big <sighs> exhales. And this will kind of help calm the nervous system a bit. Um, if you have a hard time kind of doing that on your own, you can pop you know, one of those kind of like apps on to help guide you through some some breathing techniques and sometimes I even do this while I'm in the waiting room so while I'm waiting for the procedure sometimes can be more anxiety producing than actually being in the procedure room itself it's that build up that anticipation so when I find my nerves are really bad what I'll often do is I'll like you know put one earphone in so I can hear when they call but I still have this and then I'll walk through like a kind of guided breathing deep breathing kind of meditation and kind of just do as much as I can to kind of calm my nervous system down Another thing is that if you take anxiety medication, like I do, um, don't forget to take it the morning of, you're definitely not gonna wanna skip that day. Um, and finally, make sure that you pack some comfort items, pack some water, because you wanna stay hydrated, pack some snacks, because again, as we all know, um, going to the gynecologist or the dermatologist, they're a specialist. And if your appointment is at one, you might be called at one or you might be called at three or later. So we never really know how long we're gonna spend in the office. And if you're like me and you get hungry like every two, three hours, you definitely don't wanna be hangry. Again, we're just trying to like stack the cards in our favor and make this as comfortable and easy as this can possibly be. And if you are stressed and anxious, but also hangry because you wanna eat, at least we can fix, we can't maybe fix the nerves. We can't turn the nerves off or the anxiety, but we can work with the hunger that we can. So bring some nice snacks, bring a protein bar, banana, whatever the heck you want to bring. Bring that, have some water for hydration um, and any other comfort item that you that you might have, right? We're all, we're all different. Maybe you have a sentimental piece of jewelry that was handed down for, you know, from a loved one. Maybe you have, you know, um, a favorite shirt that makes you happy um you know some cute socks just just some kind of comfort item with you to kind of you know help you feel a little bit better the day of so those are my um tips for during the procedure all right so what i'm going to share in the rest of this video is tips for you know how to kind of heal and recover after you've had your biopsy 
So we went through the biopsy, you're at home, and now that numbing agent that they gave you with the injection is starting to wear off and that pain is starting to creep up. All you wanna do is heal as quickly as possible. So here are some things to help you do so. First off, if you're experiencing pain, use the pain medication recommended or prescribed by your healthcare provider at the appropriate dosing schedule. So if they prescribed a medication, follow the instructions that they gave you for that. If you're using um, acetaminophen or ibuprofen, again, just look at the back of the bottle and make sure that you're taking the right amount of medication at the right amount of kind of times. They don't want to take too much, right? So just make sure that you know how often to take it and take the medication. Again, if you are in pain, ice can really help. Ice can help reduce inflammation and really kind of numb out that pain. Again, I just love these gel inserts by Private Packs so much for this reason. They're so um, flexible and they really hug the contours of your body. They really cover that whole vulvar area and that protective sleeve that they come with really ensures that you're not going to kind of burn or injure that area from the cold or the heat if you decide to heat it up. Um, so again, ice can be really helpful for pain and inflammation. So you can use that and you can use whichever pain medication your doctor gave you to kind of manage pain afterwards. Um, another thing is make sure again that peri bottle that you got Anytime you are urinating, you just want to make sure that you are cleaning the area with that, you know, just kind of rinsing off. Um, if your doctor did recommend using Vaseline or something like that on the biopsy site, then definitely follow their instructions. Other than that, you want to do your best to keep the biopsy site clean and dry during that recovery um, procedure. Another thing that you want to do is make sure that you are getting a ton of rest. We can really repair and heal when we're getting good sleep. So prioritize sleep, prioritize naps. If you're a napper, I wish I could nap, but I cannot nap. I suck at naps, but you don't have to nap to rest or sleep to rest, right? Just take it easy. And on that note, you're probably going to want to take at least two to three days off work afterwards. Now, I do know folks that went to work the same day they went into the office, they got their biopsy, they got in their car, and then they drove to work, finished working, drove themselves home, and went to work the next day. To each their own, listen to, respect, and honor your body. Um, but for the most part, I'd probably recommend a couple of days just of downtime to kind of really rest and let the body do what it needs to do to kind of heal that area. Also, of course, you know I love my hydration. Stay hydrated, you know, wherever you decide to kind of heal or recover, um, you know, whether that's in your bed, whether you have like a couch or you made a little fort set up in the living room, um, set up like a little care, care desk space. Thing, um, and kind of keep things like your medication there, keep things like your Vaseline there, keep um, some nice fun snacks, keep a nice big bottle of water so that you can stay hydrated. Um, along with that resting, you know, it doesn't have to be napping. Take that, you know, Netflix list that you've been putting off, um, all those shows and movies that you're like, I want to watch this. I just don't have the time. Now you have time. You can watch binge Netflix from morning till evening you can legit give yourself permission to just watch all of the shows um, in addition to keeping the area dry and clean you're also going to want to avoid any sexual activity until the area has kind of um, fully healed and another thing is definitely practice a lot of self-care um, you know biopsies can be very traumatic and they can bring a lot of emotion and thoughts and feelings to the surface. So please know that, you know, if you're watching this and you had a tough time emotionally after your biopsy or you're going through one now and you're struggling emotionally, you're not alone in that. It is very, very normal. These things can be traumatic and bring a lot to the surface. So, um, you know, please be gentle with yourself and show yourself some you know, uh, love and some self-compassion and do some nice things for yourself. 
Um, if those emotions are really difficult to work with, uh, call a friend, call a loved one, reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm having a really hard time. Do you have space? I just need to kind of talk through my emotions right now. Um, or reach out to your support network. So if you are in any kind of lichen sclerosis support group, make a space, make a space, <laughs> make a post, you know, tell folks what's on your mind, what you're struggling with, what you need. So I need words of validation. I need thoughts and prayers. I need, you know, advice, you know, whatever it is that you need, ask for it, reach out to those support groups. Um, if you're a part of Lichen Sclerosis Support Network and LS Warriors, reach out there. If you're in the Facebook groups, reach out there. If you're on a different forum, just make sure that you have some kind of support because these things can really bring up a lot to the surface. So these are all things that you can do to kind of help with the pain, help recover and heal quicker and help with, you know, the emotional kind of turbulence and difficulties that this can bring up. All right, so that wraps up this video on vulvar biopsy tips for before, during, and after your biopsy to make the procedure as comfortable as it can be and to get you healing and recovered as quickly as possible. So in closing, I just wanna note that nobody's biopsy experience is going to be the exact same so as much as you can try not to compare yourselves for to others some people find it a walk in the park and say it barely hurt others say it was excruciating um, some people healed up you know in a couple of days some people took a full week everybody's different so just kind of you know do your best not to compare yourself to other people's journey and Hopefully, you know, you can use some of these tips and tricks in this video and that that will help you a little bit. Um, please feel free to share your biopsy stories in the comments below. Please feel free to add more tips and tricks. I am always loving when our community shares, right? I mean, because what works for one person might not work for another. So there might be things that I didn't list that were super helpful for you. Please put that in the comments so that other people seeing it can read it and maybe um, pick those up. If you found the information in this video helpful, I would super duper appreciate a like and a subscribe. And that is it for this one. I will catch you in the next one.